Uh, in this video, we're going to look at how to do text ad testing that is statistically valid. And uh, the inspiration for this, uh, this video came in part from a blog post over at the Click Equations blog uh, where they talk about effective text ad testing. Uh, and I uh, do recommend that you read this blog post if you get a chance. It's a great overview of, of ad testing. And there is a section that talks about statistically valid text ad testing analysis and it offers some good insights and also some links to a free tool that's online and also to a paid tool that's an Excel spreadsheet. And I thought that it would be pretty cool if we could uh, create a, a spreadsheet uh, for, for testing statistically uh, valid test sizes uh, and just give it away for free. And uh, the resources that I used for the spreadsheet in part came from the marketing experiments blog where they give away some free tools and one of them is a PDF of uh, a data sample statistics and um, it mainly offers uh, some some of the formulas that they're using um, and it hints at a spreadsheet that I think they give away maybe to people that use their uh, that take their class or their course on, uh, on doing landing page testing and uh, what I did was take, uh, try to reverse engineer the section uh, that you see here for uh, testing for the minimum sample size and do that in an Excel spreadsheet. And uh, another resource that we used was uh, data mining techniques for marketing sales and customer relationship. And there is a section uh, in the book on comparing results using difference of proportions uh, or the standard error of difference of proportions. And also there's a section in the book about uh, size of test and control for an experiment uh, that is also relevant. And uh, I also had uh, quite a bit of help from a good friend of mine who's a lot better at math than me. Uh, his name is Landon Myers. And let's go to the spreadsheet. All right, so here we have uh, the spreadsheet. And the gray sections are the input cells where you're going to put your uh, champion impressions, clicks, and conversions, as well as your challengers impressions, clicks, and conversions. And then all the other calculations are going to be done for you. Uh, you can choose a confidence level from this drop down. And I did a little bit of uh, conditional formatting uh, to show when you have a winner uh, or a loser. It will turn red if you had a loser. And uh, so here you see we have a statistically significant winner for click through as well as impression to conversion. And uh, we don't have a statistical significance for our conversion rate. And uh, they're very close, so that makes sense. Uh, down in this section, this is a replica of what you saw in the Marketing Experiments PDF. And I, uh, uh, with help from a friend, we tried to reverse engineer what we were seeing in that picture and to actually make it work in a spreadsheet, and we did accomplish that. So you can plug in the number of recipes that you're going to test. Uh, the difference that you're wanting to detect in that test as well as the expected conversion rate and you can also put in a confidence level that you're wanting to, uh, to solve for and it will do some math and it'll tell you the total sample size you're going to need uh, for that test so it helps you before you de decide to run a test uh, determine how long it might take for you to, to prove significance and uh, you can change the number of recipes and of course it's going to go up you can change the confidence level make it go up and the recipe goes up as well or the sample size goes up as well and what we did was try to do some stuff with the algebra and solve for this needed difference so that you could take the actual performance metrics of a test ad that you have running and it would tell you the difference that it would need to be significant so here it's saying that given the sample size and the click-through rate that you have you would need a difference of 0.221 now of course our actual difference is 1.76 so we have a very uh, statist statistically significant um, winner and I can change this to 99 and it still doesn't even get close what this means is, is that we could have picked a winner for click-through a long time ago so we probably left some money on the table with this particular uh, particular text at our test. Uh, here you see that uh, the conversion rates, they're extremely close. It's saying that we would need a difference of 2.8 uh, given our current uh, sample size. 
in order for this particular, the actual difference to be considered valid, we would need uh, almost 70,000 clicks, and of course we only have 4,400. So it take a long time to prove that this small difference in conversion rate uh, was statistically valid. And we're also doing some math for optimizing for um, uh, impression to conversion rate. And uh, here we do have a statistically significant winner with a 42% lift. Uh, tells us that we needed uh, one point, I'm sorry, 0.143%, and we actually have 0.74. And of course, it's doing the, the needed uh, sample size calculation for the actual difference as well. And if we scroll over a little bit further, you see this is driving the combo box um, that you can control over here. And this is used to, to calculate this needed sample size given the actual difference as opposed to the needed difference. And so my hope is that you can take this spreadsheet, um, extend it uh, for your own purposes. I think it would be pretty cool. You could uh, run an AdWords uh, text ad report, pull it into Excel, create a pivot table, uh, throw these formulas out next to it, um, and you could run through all of your ad groups if you uh, just you know filter for your ad group and then you could uh, pick your winners uh, pretty easily it seems like. So try it out. Uh, of course, let me know if we got some of the math wrong. It's, uh, it's probable I'm not that great at statistics. Uh, until next time.